So we know that people with chronic lung conditions are at increased risk for uh, getting sicker when they develop COVID-19. Uh, we also know that people with diabetes and coronary disease, hypertension are also at increased risk. And unfortunately, these diseases sometimes go together which add your risk. So the answer is uh, you should be worried enough to protect yourself uh, and do all the things that have been recommended by the CDC. Hand washing, social distancing, uh, really trying to limit uh, large groups of patients, um, really trying to uh, keep yourself uh, protected, uh, don't bring your hands to your face. I think if you already know the patient has a chronic lung disease, other things you need to do uh, is to number one, um, assess if they're having home visits, if patients are, are being seen by nurses, uh, uh, home aides. Uh, and I think it's prudent to screen people who come into your house. Ask them if they are sick, ask them if they have a fever, obviously ask them if they traveled to um, one of the identified areas that uh, are hotspots. Um, and or, or you should also ask them if they've had contact with a COVID-19 uh, patient uh, because you may want to limit their access to your loved one. Uh, the other thing you may want to look at is uh, see what supplies they have, what medicines they need, uh, and make sure that uh, there's a robust supply of uh, the, the medications and the, the durable equipment that they need. Specific findings for coronavirus in terms of symptoms uh, really are a cough, fever, uh, chest congestion, uh, so those are uh, sore throat. So these are the ones that uh, you should be considering uh, as whether or not you want to contact your healthcare provider. Uh, you should not just immediately go to the hospital. Um, you should, again, take an inventory of your symptoms, call your healthcare provider, uh, and together decide whether or not you need to be tested. Uh, once you've decided that, yes, you should be tested, one of the things you should look at is what's the nearest facility that you can be tested. That way uh, ensures your travel to that site is minimum, therefore you're exposing less patients uh, and, and, and non-patients to you. Uh, so again, it's very important, be in contact with your healthcare provider, find out where, what services are available to you, that in fact, testing is available in the place you are intending to go, uh, and then call that, that place, whether it be at a hospital, doctor's office, and let them know that you are coming. Uh, the other thing you should do is if you're going to go, uh, and if you have uh, handy a mask, you should wear that upon entry into any health facility uh, if you suspect that you may have symptoms consistent with COVID-19. COVID-19 uh, is a viral disease uh, which does not um, respond to antibiotics. Uh, so therefore, having antibiotics and steroids at home is generally not recommended. Uh, however, uh, if you're somebody who is susceptible to having uh, infections for other reasons and you are worried that you might not be able to get out uh, if you were to require a bacterial infection, I would discuss with your, um, with your primary care doctor or your provider whether or not having antibiotics for bacterial infections, should that occur uh, while you're in isolation, uh, having that on hand might be of some benefit. Same thing with asthmatics. Uh, if you're worried about getting sick while you're um, inventoried um, at home, uh, you might then want to consider uh, having steroids on hand. You do not want to be using systemic corticosteroids for treatment of COVID-19. So if you suspect that you have COVID-19, uh, you, you should not be taking antibiotics and should not be taking steroids. You really should be contacting your healthcare provider. Should people keep their appointments um, if it's a routine medical appointment, uh, I would discuss with your uh, health care provider uh, alternative means to uh, receive health care. Uh, this may involve routine uh, obtaining of your prescriptions. Uh, you may be thinking you're going in for a diagnostic test that may in fact not be available because of strains on the health system. So I think you begin with a phone call, speak with your doctor. If the feeling is you do in fact need to uh, have some sort of consultation, many health systems are moving towards a telemedicine platform uh, where you can uh, have uh, an video conferencing with your physician. Uh, they can, uh, number one, see you face to face. Number two, they can do some limited medical evaluation uh, and then hopefully be able to continue with your ongoing medical care without interruption. Uh, if it's a critical therapeutic medical visit, then you really, again, need to consider whether the reason you're going in is for on oncologic therapy, for biological infusion. Uh, then you have to weigh the risk of coming into uh, contact with people versus the risk of missing uh, a drug that is being considered therapeutic. Uh, so again, if there's any doubt, 
consultation with your healthcare uh, provider should help you navigate the decision as to whether or not you want to come in for your routine visit. My name is Louis DePaulo. I'm a professor of medicine, uh, pulmonary and critical care at the Mount Sinai Hospital. If you have any questions regarding uh, information uh, that you uh, would like to seek, uh, you would get in touch with mountsinai.org uh, slash COVID-19.